I want to talk about the two ends of the the proverbial spectrum that is getting more more airplay becoming more divisive than than any other thing perhaps other than climate change which kind of ties into it anyway it's but that's the vegans on one end and the carnivores on the other and have a really objective look at the benefits of like let's talk about red meat because it's probably the most nutritionally dense of of all the meats on one end of what actually is in it and what is potentially dangerous about it and then on the other end the the nutrients that you get being on a on a vegan diet and the benefits of that and the potential dangers of that yeah and i know that's a that's a it's a, it's a big ask but can we just start with that like let, let, let's start with the plants like what's the benefit of being on a vegan diet Look, I think the benefit of going to a vegan diet is that you are no longer on the standard Australian diet. You're not on a sad diet. Being heavily processed, sugar. Lots of sugars. Yeah. Now, the problem with... But you can have a lot of sugars on a vegan diet. There's a lot of vegans I know that have a lot of sugars and And they're very unhealthy. Yeah. But the problem is when we do the research, the research doesn't include those sugars. It doesn't include the Tim Tams and the snakes and all these kind of things mm. on the research. So... You can pick any diet you want. If you compare it to the very low bar that is a standard Australian oh, diet, yeah. it is going to come out superior. Yeah, of course. So when people point at the studies and say, this diet found this and this study showed this and it's clearly good, it's like, well, what are you comparing it to? Mm. And nobody has compared a whole foods animal-based diet with a whole foods vegetarian diet. or vegan diet, yeah. plant-based. So when they're, uh, one of the big problems with the research is that when they're looking at what they consider to be red meat, they're actually conflating it with intake of junk food. So a lot of it is and done- all sorts of other confounding factors, yeah? Well, absolutely. But that, let's just address this one for the moment. So a lot of the studies are done on food frequency questionnaires, which so if I can do, how many milligrams of salt did you have yesterday? Yeah. How many eggs have you had in the last 12 months? Uh, you know, these things are just- Most inherent, people can't remember what they had for breakfast. Let exactly. Alone. Yeah, I get it. Inherently unreliable. Yeah. And then- Just for, for people's knowledge, is, is this a typical epidemiological study that they use the framework for? Yes. Yeah. Food, food frequency questionnaires are a standard instrument involved yeah. in nutritional research. And then we might take something like intake. And if somebody's eaten pizza, do you know what food group pizza gets in class does? Red meat. Yeah, wow. Because it might have a bit of meat on it. Yeah. Now, if you're having a pizza, could you be having a soft drink perhaps at the same time? Mm. If you're having a hot dog, you know, are you sort of having, you, you're not having that uh, with a salad on the side, are you? Mm. Um, so there's these confounding variables where the, the misclassification of foods, the, the poor recall of foods, and the, uh, the associated health behaviours, which you alluded to before. Now, we have it. It's it's a healthy user bias, is what we call it. So, if you believe that something is healthy um, or unhealthy, then that's going to influence your behaviour. If you're the kind of person who takes care of your health, and somebody says red meat is bad for you, say fine, I'll eat less red meat. Mm. You're also the kind of person who will probably quit smoking if yeah. you're addicted to smoking. You'll exercise because you're told that that's good. You'll try and get enough sleep because you're being told that's useful. Mm. So because of this association that red meat, it's been correlated, um, at least in the public perception, with ill health, uh, a lot of the research is now subject to this healthy user bias. Mm. And this is why the epidemiological research, or as some people term it, the epidemiological research, yeah. it, you just can't trust it. And until... They come out with a proper experimental design that compares a whole foods animal diet. That means without the soft drinks. Yeah. That means, you know, it's not red meat on pizza. It's yeah. red meat from well-cooked, healthy steak yeah. compared to a whole foods plant-based diet. We're not going to have a definitive answer. Yeah. But if we have a look at uh, things from a, a biochemical perspective or a nutrient density perspective or any other number of uh, ways... We can clearly see there's benefits in animal foods. There was a paper uh, published a few years ago, um, and I believe it was sanctioned by the World Health Organization looking at stunting 
in different countries across the world. Stunting, like Stunting, not yeah. growing at all. Retarded growth in yeah. children, um, pathological. Yeah. And that actually showed a clear correlation with lack of animal food intake. Mm. Um, they did uh, interventional studies. There was one study they did in Ecuador where they actually, uh, a control group, they gave them an egg a day um, because it's a lot of the reason that animal protein is not consumed across most of the world is nothing to do with attitudes to meat. It's due to its economics yeah, and availability. Yeah. I mean, we're incredibly in the fortunate position where we have the option of having animal products if we don't. Unfortunately, in much of the world, that's not the case. Mm. And they're actually f able to find that they are able to prevent a lot of this pathological stunting in children just with an egg a day. Now, and they've also done various analyses looking at other animal foods and basically they found that you know red meat dairy and eggs are absolute winners when it comes to child's health and growth and development mm. now if we were to but just stay on this for a moment um the developing brain uh requires an omega-3 fat called dha so i think something like uh, two-thirds of the brain is uh, fat and of that, this DHA fat, it's an omega-3 fat, is a major, major part of it. And this does not come from animal foods, uh, perhaps with the potential exception of algae, mm -hmm. which is why it's in fish. Yeah. But we're not eating algae. Um, the animal foods we're eating, the flax seeds, that's got a, a form of omega-3 that's very poorly bioavailable and very little if any, will actually be converted into this uh, DHA, which is a building block mm. for the brain. So uh, there's been uh, lots of research looking at developing children and cognition and brain. And it's a pretty clear picture that if you have this available in the diet, uh, it actually will affect the IQ.